Ready for Christmas? Yeah. Good. I mean, is this like bad sweater day or is it? I mean, what do you mean bad sweater? Yeah. What's that? I like it, you know. Are y'all like? Do you want to set you didn't have to wear a shirt and tie anymore? Well, I got soaked. I'm sitting here and my pants are soaked. <laughs> and, um, not because of anything other than I got water on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I got, I got pretty, pretty soaked. Right just, what was the difference? You had a hat on. Did you say it clicked? Well, I mean, you guys saw I me. Mean, we missed the plane. We had wide open shots and didn't go in. And I, and I felt like that. And what I told the team at halftime, the only time I felt like we really had the kind of intensity that we normally have on the defensive end in this game is when we made some shots. And so we shouldn't allow offense to dictate how we're going to play on the defensive end. And, and uh, but then the second half, you know, we moved the ball better. You know, instead of trying to make one quick hit and be done. You know, we moved the ball well. We did some things defensively. Second half, I thought we were better. He certainly, you know, did yoga work in there. I mean, he did. He, he was great for what he was doing. But uh, and they do some different things, run a lot of different things at you. But uh, overall, you know, I'm just glad to see us get going in the second half because uh, offensively, but I think we did some things here in the second half offensively that we haven't done all year, which Hopefully they will be able to look at it and learn from it. Steve, when you to win, what does it mean to you to kind of join that fraternity? Well, I think God for a great game of basketball. I mean, I think I think him for the blessings that he's given me. And what that means is I've been able to be at some wonderful universities. And I've been able to have wonderful people around me. Uh, Terrific, terrific players. I mean, it's not when you talk about coaching wins. It really is. It, it, it's team when you talk about basketball. And, and uh, I really hadn't thought about it. But I would have when I walked in the locker room. I would get prepared for those guys who hit me with that water. I wasn't. I wasn't. Prepared. I should have been because they, they were very quiet. Like, but you know what? Again, you've been doing it as long as I've been doing it. Again, it's just a blessing from God that I've been able to have you with people. And I'm, I'm really thankful that where I am in my career right now, that I'm at the University of Tennessee. Um, I love our fan base here. I love our university. I love the people I work with. And, and um, you know, we want to continue to set the bar high and see what we can get there. And, but, uh, again, when you do something like that, uh, you think if, if you really stop and reflect on it, it's so many – Great assistance because I've always really tried to pride myself in what I've always felt we've had the best coaching staff in the country, best support people, and all that. And, and uh, I've got a great family that you know they they've been with me. And someone asked me the other day about uh, what I, my family thought about it. Bryce Drew asked me. I said, "Well, Bryce, if you walked in my house, you would never think I coached basketball. There's not one thing in our house that I think that I was a basketball. And that's really how my, my wife has done things." You know, she's made sure our kids grew up with their own identity and not involved in what I was doing. But they've been there for me every step of the way, and Candy has. And uh, so, again, just God has blessed me in more ways than I certainly deserve. There's a reference to being able to do some things in the second half. I think you haven't done this year. What were some of those things that did? Well, you know, Monday and I had a long talk last night after our team meeting, and because he, he, he said, I mean, you guys can imagine what he's gone through. I mean, we've never had a guy that, he's one of those guys that love coaching, love being around, he works hard, and, and getting ready for his senior year, he wanted to be a great year for himself, and he's, and he's obviously his shoulder's been a problem. And, uh, but I told him we're gonna figure out how to, uh, how to do it for him because he, he's so unselfish and he wants to see these guys do well but he's you know, he might have to make some changes until he can get his shoulder back where he thinks he can work the way he wants to work and, but uh, and, you know what Jordan Bowden went through uh, this week has been tough but those two guys have been great great leaders and so what we try to do in the second half some put Lamonte in the post let him get down there because he's good there and um, made some plays got him around the rim a little bit because he's a good layup maker he makes good passes and so we'll, we'll adjust some things, um, but we started to, today, and um, with the second half of the game, we, we got better movement, we got the ball reverse on, and got to a flow a little bit, and we're able to get really good offensive possessions. Is that Grant West? Coach, since your first win at George Mason, I guess, has your coaching philosophy changed through the years? And secondly, you know, have kids throughout the years changed, have had to change the way that you kind of teach kids to 
Uh, not really, to be quite honest with you. I don't. Uh, I think that we've we've always believed in playing high percentage, sound basketball. You know, player development's always been a big part of it. I, I say all the time, I don't. I don't think kids are as much different as they're now. They're exposed to so much more in terms of. Uh, I don't think kids today had any different dreams than when I was a kid growing up. Everybody wanted to be a big league athlete in some way. And our kids, do I go to different? Um, yeah, because uh, when I was younger, in the middle part of my coaching career, I, I was out of control in terms of letting my ego get in the way. And, and uh, so I've really gone back to coaching the way I did when I first started. And really as an assistant coach, and that happened probably 10 years ago. Where, but I, I just think that, uh, do I think kids are different? I don't, I really don't. I just think they're exposed to a lot. I think I think the best players, the good players, they want to be coached. They want to, they don't want to look back and have regrets. And um, I think as a coaching staff, you know, again, I said it earlier, always been in a position where I felt like we could get some of the best coaches in the country. And, I think today our coaching staff here is the best coaching staff in the country. And, uh, fortunately, I'm in a place that supports us in doing it. Was that Eve in the second half kind of the one you've been looking for the last couple of weeks? It, yeah, he is. And, he, and you know, again, you look at our team, you know, Jordan Bowden, Lamonte Turner, they're, they're learning new roles there. They're in roles they haven't been. Eve Bonds has made the switch to go back inside where we had to do that for this team. And uh, so those guys are all learning something. John Fulkerson realizing that, you know what, we need him to do uh, tonight. He had 15 points, so, and we need that from him. And in the past, he's been pretty content, uh, pretty much ride away and see what happens. But uh, so these guys are all, I think, again, we're still trying to find ourselves, but I love these guys. I, I just love the fact that they want to be a good basketball team. And, but we do have guys learning new roles and we've got young guys that are finding out that it's a whole lot harder than they probably thought it was coming in. But I do see some progress on both sides of that with the older guys buying into their role and the young guys understanding the urgency of being able to play. When you, the way you treat this holiday break as a coach, I know some coaches tell guys to kind of jog around a little bit, get, get some shots up, and some guys say just, just kind of get away from the game for a couple of days. Where do you fall on that? And does the way your team's playing at the time? Like that? I think they need to get away from it. We do right now for sure. We've got we got some guys that really need to have a couple days where their bodies can really heal. We haven't had a chance to do that much, and uh, so we need that. And we have to come back Christmas night because you know we got that turnaround with Wisconsin on uh, the 28th, and it's a one o'clock game. And, and what I hate about it is that we have to come back on Christmas night. That's that's the only thing I, I just I wish we didn't have to do that. But, it's the first time in a long time we, we had to do it, but we had to because of the way the schedule. But I told him that I, I don't want them to play. I, don't, I just want them to get home and spend time with family and let their bodies get rested up. And we'll be back here uh, what is that, four days. Is that right? Yeah, second, third. So you know, I basically have three days off. We've had two off in the last four or five months, but we haven't had three. And, and that first one is always a very tough one because all we'll do is shake it out. And, get the win back because they won't be able to win it, but hopefully the uh, time off is going to help us. Coach, how important it was Jordan Bowden, especially in the middle of the first half, but then he had 10 unanswered points by Jacksonville State, and then he stepped out had two really important three points. You know, how important was this for the, you know, throughout the game? Well, we couldn't buy a shot in, in the first half. I mean, we had some looks at it that we would like to have every single night if we could. And uh, so him stepping up, making those were big, big. I, I think that, and but also, even though I don't, I don't like saying it, it, it helped us give us a little bit more energy on the defensive end. I'd like to think we're going to play defense, defense regardless of what we're doing on the offense. And we've done that pretty much all year. But I think for him, too, it was important because he, he struggled some lately. And, and the fact that he did that, but at that point in time, we, we needed it. What's the disconnect with Jalen Johnson? Why can't he stay on the floor? And, and the guys that play in front of him, why do they stay on the floor? Well, I, th I think one, I mean, you know, those minutes, and, and we're going to play the, who's being productive. You, you, you look at him and, and Devontae, uh, it's going to be guarding is, is the biggest reason. I mean, we've we got to guard. And so it starts on that end. And then uh, 
understanding flow shot you know i mean uh, i mean look at Taylor's stats today what, what did he what did he do today uh, uh when you think about it, he played uh, nine minutes he got three shots and uh got a rebound and um so what, what Devonte drew pember was not you know the game was too physical for him today and uh ticket was 12 minutes one for three four free throws um, no rebounds and, and again it, I think it goes back to feel. I mean the ticket did have three assists and um, he was a plus seven when he was there right or a four right plus seven. But it, it, it goes back to what we think the game's being played with defense being the first thing really and then on offense, you know, trying to get the, the rhythm going there and uh, it can fluctuate game to game. And um, that's I think it's probably the best way I can answer it. Thank you, Coach. All right, thank, thank you. you.